There is a supernatural world that surrounds us, and sometimes it manifests to people like you and me. You hear stories about this and so much more right here on Supernatural Confrontations. <laughs> Folks, the supernatural world is real. If you've got a story, please email us at supernatural at lamarzuli.net. Supernatural at lamarzuli.net. Our producer, John Adam, will get back to you. We'll set up a date and we'll be able to put you on Zoom just like we're doing now. So before we get into that, here's a word from our trusted sponsor. Collagen is often referred to as our modern day fountain of youth and for a good reason. Our body loses its natural ability to produce collagen as we age. This is the reason why we see a visible decline in our skin, hair, and nails. Supplementing collagen can help reverse those visible signs of aging, but we have to make sure we're getting it from the right source. This multi-collagen uses a unique blend of the top five critically most important types of collagen our bodies need to help bring back the youthfulness into our skin, hair, and nails. Folks, mix it into the morning drink once a day. That's what I do and watch as your body re-energizes and rejuvenates itself from the inside out, thanks to this powerful blend of collagen. If you've ever wondered how celebrities keep their skin, hair and nails glowing, now you know. Folks, order it today to get a bundle of benefits like VIP health and fitness coaching for life and a new downloadable report called The 14 Foods for Amazing Skin, completely free. Folks, please be sure to go to healthwithla.com. That's healthwithla.com or click the link below for more information. So what I really like to do is, is the person I'm interviewing or that's coming on the record on the show is basically let them tell the story. So here's their interview. Dan, thanks so much for joining us on uh, Supernatural Confrontations. And uh, thank you for your boldness and your courage for coming on the record and, and sharing uh, your experience. People need to hear what's going on out there because it, it happens to, you know, all sorts of people in all walks of life and you're in Kansas. So tell us what happened. Give us the backstory, please. All right. Well, thanks for having me. And uh, it was back in 2014 and my girlfriend had enrolled in a uh, 21 day inpatient rehab program uh, and so she was, you know, living, living in for the 21 days at this facility or whatnot. And she was allowed like one call a day during a certain one hour slot and all that stuff, which is pretty standard, I guess. And, uh, every Tuesday or so they'd have a, uh, a group meeting or a guest, you know, meeting where, uh, you know, and I'd show up in support of her and whatnot. They'd spend like an hour. And it was, you know, basically like a your typical meeting or whatnot. We talked around the circle and stuff like that. Nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, well, then they had this special day planned, which was a, a family day, they called it. And uh, each person was supposed to bring in at least two of their family members uh, for an, an extended meeting. It was going to be like three hours long or okay. something like that. Well, my girlfriend didn't have any family uh, in the area. Her mom had just died. All her sisters lived out of state or whatnot. And I was her only guest, you know, who showed up in support of her or whatnot. And uh, so I show up at the facility and uh, she introduces me to this guy, the lead counselor of the, the whole thing the guy strikes me as a little odd right off the bat um just you know the way that he looked basically for one he had this super thin bone structure you know like 
He was just real skinny bone. Uh, but the guy was like ripped. He had like huge muscles as well. It was like the extreme of both ends uh, where he was just real thin bone, but like an Olympic athlete muscular. And, yeah. it, you know, it, it just it struck me as odd, you know, just looking at it. But then it was also uh, the way that the guy was dressed. <laughs> He uh, he was wearing like you know some polo shirt with khaki shorts, and uh, you know real ultra clean. You could tell it, you know, all his clothes were perfect. You know, not a wrinkle, not a you know a stain or anything. And then he was wearing like uh, high top leather logging boots or like a military style boot. Uh, you know the lace up in the front uh vibram sole you know they they were really nice boots <laughs> you know probably really expensive too uh like a rugged outdoor boot and uh but they were polished brown leather like polished to a shine and there wasn't a scuff or a scratch on them wow. you know and i'm kind of a boots guy myself and an outdoors guy so you know I, I took notice of his boots you know but noticed that they didn't have any use whatsoever on them but it seemed like an odd style choice for, you know, khaki shorts and a polo shirt <laughs> with that's your high top pocket. Yeah, shirt. that's a little weird for sure. Definitely. Right. Weird. You know, and it, so it stood out as kind of odd to me. And I'm the guy who pioneered the shorts and boots look, <laughs> you know, and it was even odd to me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I didn't think much of it uh, other than it, you know, it was just a little weird. And, uh, you know, the guy's, the guy's hair and everything was just, like, perfectly styled and whatnot. You could tell it was, like, an obsession, you know, that he had, like, an OCD type thing. Everything was just perfect, you know. And, and I, again, I didn't think much of it. So after we were introduced, he, he instructs us to, uh, to go into the conference room and find a chair and remain absolutely silent throughout the whole thing which you know i'm like all right and uh so i walk into the conference room and it's there's no lights on it's pitch black basically and uh there's rows of chairs that cut the room here i brought some uh a visual aid if i can get this up there the room was a rectangle like that, and there was three sides of chairs, you know, one against the back wall, and then two cut in the room like that, with a table in the center, and a single candle was the only light in the whole room. And, uh, you know, so I, as I walk in, I, you know, think to myself, well, you know, that seems a little culty, you know, or kind of weird. So. You know, this is you know, obviously some new age, you know, sort of facility or something. It you know, just struck me as weird. But so I went and found myself a seat in the corner about <laughs> up against the back wall there. So I just want to recap real quickly. So you see this guy, he's kind of dressed a little odd, you know, eh, so what? But then right. you go into this room and everything's... It, that's where it starts to get weird. The single candle on the desk. Pick it up a story from there. What happens? All right. So I take my seat and, uh, you know, just sit there, and do as I was instructed, you know, remain quiet. And uh, everyone, you know, comes into the room, takes their seats and everything, and they start the thing. Uh, well, my girlfriend, since she doesn't have any family with her, they right. send her up first. And uh, basically, she gets up and says a few words about this or that, and then goes and sits down, and she's done. <laughs> and then they, you know, essentially really start the thing, in which they bring the patients up one by one and sit them across the table in the center from two of their family members, and uh, who are also instructed to remain absolutely silent throughout and only the patients are talking. Uh, and they're instructed to uh, 
tell all the you know the things that they've ever done to hurt you know their family member or ever done you know bad while they were you know on drugs or whatnot basically you know confess everything to their family members which <laughs> you know is you know seemed like it you know could be a legitimate medical you know psych psychology thing i guess uh but you know so they they begin and uh you know basically it's a big you know sob story oh you know shame guilt humiliation type thing and it's uh it's difficult to sit there and watch uh you know i i'm basically you know <laughs> thinking about how i can get through the door there yeah. and get out of this place it's just you know it's a terrible atmosphere everything's you know just a big sorrow you know whatever it was it was terrible <laughs> to say the least you know and so i'm basically just got my head down you know and i'm trying not to listen to any of it i'm just trying to get through the next three hours you know maybe 15 20 minutes into the thing you know i've got my head down so i'm not really looking at the candlelight or anything i'm basically just sitting there in pitch darkness and um you know i, I look up and i catch a glimpse from behind the table with the candle and i see that guy sitting in a chair uh back behind the table in a like right here kind of against the wall that doesn't have any chairs along it got it and he, he's just back there in complete darkness you know i i can only just barely see him from where i'm sitting he's kind of moving around weird or something like that and i'm like you know what what's he doing back there you know what's what's you know what's going on why is he even sitting back there by himself in the middle of nowhere right. Right. Why would he just be sitting on the side or something, you know? And uh so I, you know, I I'm trying to, you know, see what's what he's doing back there or whatnot. I, you know, put my hat down to the side kind of and I'm blocking the candlelight from my eye, you know, there so I can't see anything. And I'm letting my eyes adjust to the darkness so I can, you know, kind of see what's going on back there. And eventually they do. I can see that he's sitting there in his chair and he's just like, he's got like his arms pulled back and he's just rolling his head side to side. And, you know, just like, he's just, you know, it was just weird. He's just like, you know, and he's slouched way down in his chair. And I'm like, you know, what on earth is going on? What, you know, what's he doing? I, right. Very strange. It, it reminded me like of a lizard, you know in front of the heat lamp or like a cat in the you know on the floor or in front of the window with the sun shining through just you know rolling around basking in this sun or whatnot <laughs> uh you know except you know obviously there wasn't any any light it looked like he was basking in the energy of the room which was you know just horrible energy uh to even you know be present in it you know and i get i'm sitting there and i'm watching him you know and i'm thinking well maybe he's got a kink in his neck you know or maybe he's stretching out or something like that you know yeah <laughs> but you know it really looks to me like he's literally soaking up this negative energy and so, but, so let me stop you right there you're, you're kind of giving the guy a break you know you're kind yeah. of looking at this it's odd he's oddly dressed the room is weird, and now right. he's way away from everybody, and he slots back in the chair, and he's doing some kind of weird gyration thing. Like you say, it seems like he's soaking up the energy, but you've never seen anything like this. There's yeah, nothing yeah, in your yeah. grid system to help you, right. you know, mentally. What am I looking at? Because you've never seen anything like this. So you're kind right. of, like, you're in, dare I use the word, you're in semi-stun mode. You're kind of like... Okay, yeah. I'm not sure what's going on here. Pick up the story, right. Dan. Then what? You know, he he's not stopping. He doesn't stop. He's just continuing doing it. You know, and it's I'm at this point. I'm starting to get you know somewhat angered by it because you know it, 
I realized the you know the shape of the chairs in the room, and it looks like all this is by design, you know. And I'm, you know, starting to starting to get a little angry, you know, like you know this he, this can't be happening. He can't be doing that, you know. And he's he's just not stopping it. He's just you know doing it, and I'm you know in disbelief at what I'm seeing, you know, basically. But it, you know, it, it dawns on me, maybe this is, maybe this is one of them, uh, you know, one of them other worldly beings or something. And that's what he's doing, soaking up negative energy. And I said, and I thought to myself, well, you know, if that is the case, then perhaps he's telepathic. You know, I'm yelling at the guy in my mind, you know, hey, hey, you, <laughs> you know, as I'm oh, focused. Okay. okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then it, you know, it, the more it's not working, you know, nothing's happening. Uh, you know, I'm the more angry I'm getting watching him continue to do this, you know, and it gets to the point where I'm, you know, really yelling at him, you know, you, you know, every insult I could think of, uh, you know, as loud as I could in my mind, just focusing and, uh, you know, I'm really working myself up, you know, as I'm doing it because it's not working. But the guy's still just, you know, doing this grotesque display of whatever he's got going on, you know, and I'm trying harder and harder. I can imagine, you know, I'm, the blood vessels in my, you know, head bulging and, <laughs> you know, it got to the point where, you know, I was even starting to see red, you know, a pulsing red. I was really, really trying, <laughs> you know, and nothing was working. Uh, and I eventually wore myself out basically, you know, trying and, <laughs> you know, I, I give it up for a second or whatnot, you know, I'm, I'm looking down like, well, you know, I guess the telepathy thing's not, you know, not really working or whatnot. And I, I look back up and he's just still doing it even more than ever. And it, I just got the, you know, enraged or whatever and i i vividly imagined you know just just running over there and for for some reason i had like both my hands up above my head and i just you know just come down and just smash this guy right in his chair <laughs> you know as in my imagination it was just you know some split thing of just running over there and smashing him well, simultaneously, as I imagined myself just, you know, smashing this creep, uh, he flips out of his chair like, you know, like somebody had kicked him. And it was like simultaneously, you know, he just springs out of his chair and suddenly he's looking over in my direction. You know, and I was like, <laughs> you know, that it caught me off guard. And I was like, whoa, you know, what, you know, and so... I did <laughs> the first thing that came to mind, which was turn my attention to the center table <laughs> and pretend I was listening to them, you know, because, uh, you know, it, it was way too coincidental that all of it happened just like it did. And I thought, well, now I've done it, you know. <laughs> so basically, I turned my attention and hide, <laughs> essentially, <laughs> you know the best I can explain it, you know, and I, and I can, you know, feel the guy and I'm kind of looking at him out of my peripheral vision and I can see that he's going down the line, you know, in that corner of the chairs from person to person, you know, and you can, you, I can feel it like he was getting, you know, closer to me and, uh, you know, and so I really lay it on thick that I'm pretending to listen <laughs> to the center table. And I can literally feel the guys get to me, stop on me for you know, a second, and jump on to the person next to me and keep going down the line. And I, you know, I thought to myself, you know, wow. <laughs> I said, that worked. <laughs> you know, that's that's crazy. And I, you know, and then I got to thinking, I said, well, maybe it was just complete coincidence, you know, you know, maybe, you know, I'm just, you know, it's playing into whatever's in my head. It, 
just coincidence. And I said, well, there's only one way to find out. And uh, so I, you know, sat there and <coughs> I was like in my head, I kind of turned my attention to him and, uh, you know, said inside my head, I said, you missed me. And instantly he turns and he's staring directly like a snap of his head. He was looking like right at me and glaring, like glaring mad. And I, you know, again, it caught me off guard, like, whoa, you know, and now the gig's up, <laughs> you know, he's, <laughs> this, this is happening. And now he knows it's me, you know, and now what am I going to do basically? And so I think, that, you know, I, I figure, well, I better do something quick. Let's go with the bluff, <laughs> you know? And so I, I turn and I stare directly at him, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I see you over there. You know, what, what about it? You want to, you know, you want to do something about it, you know, or whatever, you know, basically bluffing, you know, <laughs> you know, that, uh, he doesn't want to mess with me or whatnot, you know, talking tough telepathically or whatnot. And the guy's just staring at me, you know, with this glare and, uh, you know, and I keep, you know telepathically trash talking him or whatnot like come on let's you know you know let's do this or whatnot which was a total bluff and he's just staring at me and i can tell you know i get the feeling that he's not sure you know what, what you know what's going on like but who i am or what or you know how i you know somehow figured him out or whatnot and he you know it goes on for like well, a couple of minutes he's just staring and he's just glaring mad you know like he wants to do something or whatnot and then he just he just turns his head to the center of the table and never looks back at me again yeah, you know but the whole time the whole rest of the night he's just sitting there you know, with this angry, pouty look on his face, you know, no longer doing his his stuff there. He's, you know, and he's just just this angry, pouty look the whole rest of the time and never once turns and looks back at me. And uh, <coughs> thankfully, they had an intermission, <laughs> which was... Uh, which was like, you know, after an hour and a half or something. And as soon as they called intermission, you know, I'd sprung out the door and was out of there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I was like, that's weird or whatnot. You know, I couldn't believe it. I was still in disbelief over what had happened. Uh, and the next day, uh, I get the call from my girlfriend, like every day. And she tells me, she says, uh, you know, did, did you talk to somebody out as you left or, uh, you know, did anything happen as you left? I said, no, I, you know, got up and went straight out the door and, you know, to the car and left. I didn't talk to anyone or nothing. And she says, huh? She says, is that strange? They told me, uh, you know, they told me to, to tell you that it's best if you don't come to any more of the meetings. And I'm, I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> you know. And she's like, why, you know, why, I, you know, don't, why would they say something like that? And I, I told her, I said, I have a pretty good idea of why. I said, but I'll have to tell you uh, when you get out, you know, when you're, when you're done. I didn't want to, you know, mess with anything that she had going with or whatnot. Well, the next day after that, they tell her that you graduated early. And they threw her out of the program too. And, um, <laughs> you know, she's like, yeah, they just said I was good. I've graduated and they let me off early, you know, like a week early. Did you ever talk to the, your girlfriend about him specifically? Did you ever ask her about this guy? I have. And uh, strangely, she doesn't remember a whole lot about any of the program really it was uh you know 
it was it was strange that she just didn't remember much about any of it like you know there was some sort of a like a mental block or something you know she you know she just doesn't recall much about the whole thing it was real weird wow. uh you know and yeah. I, I i have talked to her of course but you know i didn't get much out of her <laughs> well i appreciate you coming on the record it's a very fascinating story um thank you dan appreciate it thanks so much there you have it folks the supernatural world is real and it does manifest by the way i will be uh, in missouri june 9th it's coming up really quick um, register for that if you if you can by going to lamarzulli.net follow the links the seed war the coming great deception i'll be speaking friday night which is the primer where we talk about genesis 315 which is the beginning of the seed war saturday morning the fatima apparitions was it mary the bible or a ufo we have a picture a picture which remained in the archives for almost 100 years before jose machado found it published it it clearly shows a dislike object in the field above the apparition site. Then after that Fatima presentation, I'll be talking about crop circles, which of course is number five in our ongoing UFO series. So I really hope to see you there because Saturday afternoon, I do a deep dive and we talk about how the seed war is manifesting in modernity with the advent of the abduction phenomena. And I think you'll find that. See, if I were to start on that on Friday night, there'd be no basis for it. That's why I've got to go slowly. So I hope to see you there at Calvary Church in Riverbend, Missouri. It's right near Cahokia. So um, hope to see you. Hope to see you. By the way, we have a five-box set, which we're in the process of, of producing. That will be coming out fairly quickly. And um, more about that in days to come. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, if you have had a supernatural confrontation, Please email our producer, John Adam, at supernatural at lamarzulli.net. That's supernatural at lamarzulli.net. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, there is a supernatural world that surrounds us, and sometimes it manifests to people like you and me.